Oh gosh, Conway. Jeez, man. I uh, That's no good. I remember well, when I was little, I had a uh, fever dream, and it, I don't know if it was the dark crystal or something, but all I remember it was there was there was a a slug with someone's head superimposed on it, and and they were talking, and meanwhile I I thought my my fever was so harsh that I could actually cook raw meat on my forehead. Yeah. Fever dreams are weird. Didn't you wake up with hot dogs on your face? I was awake the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't exactly a fever dream, but still, it's very similar to just being like 103 degree fever. Right, right. <laughs> that is not today's topic offer. <laughs> Today's topic, I thought, is pretty interesting because uh, it happens to me a lot when I stream uh, metagaming versus role-playing. And so I guess to start off with, let's just define what metagaming is for those who don't know it. It's basically approaching a game with the knowledge of the game in mind to basically, like, take control of it as opposed to playing right. it. Exactly. Yeah. Now, so, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't stream all that much, uh, but like I do, uh, I do tabletop role playing game as you guys are all pretty much uh, aware. Um, but metagaming comes up a lot in in like tabletop role playing games. It used to come up a lot in D and D when players would be like, "Oh, that's a whatever kind of monster. I know exactly how to kill it," and they would just you know ruin everything, even though like their character may not necessarily have the background information to know that they just use their out of character knowledge to manipulate the way how the game proceeds. And that's it's effectively that same phenomenon that happens. It's just applied differently. So I suppose we can talk about both. Yeah. Um convoy that that is a pretty severe temperature. <laughs> Dude, like Tom that... at, at like 108 degrees your brain starts to fry inside your skull. You should do something about that. Like yeah, go to that, the... that's like hospital worthy degrees. Like, I'm not a doctor, but you should go see a doctor. <laughs> right, no, for real. <laughs> That's pretty severe. Anyway, yeah. how's it going, MC Jose? Um, yeah, yeah my... besides my amateur doctor's knowledge. Um, right. <laughs> uh, it's more like voodoo apothecary, but anywho. Um, right. For, I'll go ahead and throw in my two cents. My mom used to do neuroscience on, on like, cats and stuff. She, she knows a little bit about, like, at what point it starts to become fatal to have a fever. Seek medical attention, convoy. This is a thing that you should do. <laughs> yes. All right. Anywho, um, back to metagaming. Uh, yeah. Let me see here. So it is something that does happen because essentially you want to have an effective character when you're playing a game because right. it, it represents you and you don't want to look like some sort of, you know, massive like wimp. Or so like the idea is is you know you want to you want to be able to play the game and, and and you know fill out this character's backstory and and influence the decisions they make but it's kind of difficult if maybe you made the wrong decision or right. <laughs> or perhaps uh you know you you chose a, a build that maybe is is cool in practice or or, or idea but not in practice yes that I feel like this happens an awful lot in uh, Bethesda games when you're when you're not familiar with like how the game's actually supposed to play. Like I, I blame a lot of my my negative opinions about Morrowind on not having enough like meta knowledge about the game system in order to really play it and enjoy it. Yeah, which is why I'm giving it a second chance. I yeah. haven't actually started playing it yet because I'm not finished like installing mods and stuff. But when I'm done with that, I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it the old college try. Yeah, awesome. But yeah, actually, um, it, it is it is funny sometimes because yeah, in in um, you're starting an archery playthrough in Morrowind. Nice, nice. Now that that is especially difficult because not only could you just miss altogether, like not even hit them with the arrow, you could miss with the arrow. <laughs> hitting them yes <laughs> and you can't retrieve those arrows they go straight through the wall 
But I will say this. Morrowind has a very interesting way of sort of... It sort of metagames itself. Like, if you use character creation, it doesn't tell you, oh, the rugged, you know, hills of the north made the Nords, you know, um, very um, uh, resistant to the brisk and cold. No, it literally says 100% resistance to frost. Right. So, you know, there's a, there's a bit of stuff there, and, and that's in-game knowledge. That's not really not metagaming. But, uh, but, like, it's when you start, like, combining things together that you know or, like, just are sort of the way that, like, the game mechanics work and, and how to manipulate those. That's hilarious, Con. Uh, but yeah, like, that's, that, that's, that's very true. Uh, but I think that, like, for playing games, more so than, like, having, uh, like, character stats and stuff, mm-hmm. like, that affects what you're talking, like, the, the issue of metagaming, it's like, oh, well, I am level one, I'm getting off of this boat in, uh, in Morrowind, and I know exactly where a Daedric Longsword is, and I know how to game the system enough to be able to just waltz right in there, take it, and then not have to do, not have to work hard at all to get anything else, and I will just be set for the rest of the game. Yep. Like, you just, like, cut out, make a beeline directly for the thing, avoid any of the, like, horrible traps or, or obstacles along the way because you know where they are, it's like it's just it, generally speaking, metagaming. The the issue that comes up that people like narc on it for is that it feels like cheating. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and those those are other ways, convoy. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Either either getting special ingredients together to make a potion that you already know about, or uh, or or basically what is you know spell spamming. Right. We're standing in a corner, you know, macroing something, and then I'll just, I'll just, you know, go offline for ten minutes, and uh, and there you go. I'm a master of, of conjuration or something. Right. Yeah, you don't want to do that. That doesn't no. make the game fun. That just means you're going to kick a little bit too much ass and maybe get bored faster. Right. And like ultimately, that's that's the issue, right? Like the game gets boring if you allow your meta knowledge to influence your actions too much. Mm-hmm. Or it gets like overly complicated, right? Like, like you, oh, you have like a strategic like process that you need to like do this to do this to do this, and then I'll kick so much ass. Exactly, and and then like, and, and like having that moment where you're like, I have to do these steps in the exact order and at like these exact moments in order to do this thing can be super frustrating. Like, so you can you can make the game not fun by like over analyzing the process yeah definitely so yeah. those are some of the problems yeah yeah no i understand and you know uh, you know morwind that's you know daedric bow all you need is a, a levitation potion there's that crazy uh, uh dungeon that starts with an m i can't pronounce any of the ashlander daedric shrines because it's i don't even care um it's near Mygon, or no it's near alderun yeah west of alderun and uh, just levitate. It's the first platform. You don't even have to fight anything. And there you go. You got a Daedric Bow. There you go. So, I mean, you know, there's there's stuff like that. Like, the previous knowledge of you playing the game makes it easier the next time because you're essentially... You're using your knowledge against yourself, almost. You might not yeah. think of it that way, but that's basically what's happening. Right. Now... Um, where, where this becomes like, now, now, like in video games, you can, you can allow that information to, to influence you one way or an, uh, another, like in, in a whole bunch of different ways. Now, sometimes having that outside knowledge and like going through a story can like enhance your fun, right? Like you can use your outside knowledge in order to plan like a path, like a story through the, uh, through like the game itself. And yeah. I think that can be I think that can be interesting and fun. No, I totally know what you mean. Like uh there's sometimes that a story unfolds during a playthrough of a whatever game you're playing and then you decide, "Oh, I want to do this first and this first because I'll know about this and then, you know, learn about this thing." And it's sort of you almost create a um sort of a, a linear story for yourself yeah. based on like what, you know, DLCs or quest lines you do. 
exactly. Yeah. But that's, uh, that's a weird one, Con. Yeah, no, that is kind of weird. That's uh, beyond metagaming, I feel like, almost. Yeah, that, that's where you start getting into... Like, there's a fine line between, like, metagaming, which is where you use the, like, information within the game, and then there's, like, breaking the game and hacking, and those are different. Yeah, so, like, speed runs. Speed like, runs any percent speed off. runs are, like, where you use that shit. Like, yeah. Morrowind has this very interesting thing where if you get your speed over 200, you can run through walls. <laughs> like, the physics just don't interact with speed. The physics just don't interact. Um... <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I, mean, that's... <laughs> I, uh, I had a character. It was, it was my first character ever in Morwen. The one that explored like 100% of the map without doing any quests whatsoever. Uh, yeah. um, um, really, it wasn't breaking the game? Did they uh, did they just find a place where it was valid to be and, and they, they could shoot anybody? or? Yeah, see, and there's that, that different thing is, is it valid to be where you are? Cause that's, because that's that's a tough thing, right? Because Convoy says that they were in competition and they got disqualified. So I would imagine that that would be like a bit like a no no kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like not not that it was an unfair advantage that they found it, because that that's I mean that's just sort of like a tough shit kind of moment, at least in my mind. Yeah. Like, you're, like you're in a competition game. I know more about that comp about this game than you do. I can use my knowledge to beat you. That is that is a skill and knowledge thing. Now, if it's a place where, like, technically they shouldn't be able to get, and they manage to find it, then to me that that to me that's where you hit like that it's breaking it kind of moment, and like that's again borderline hacking it, even though you can do it without using console commands. Yeah, or any sort of strange programs. Yeah, and hey, cabbage, how's it going? All right, but yeah, um. Yeah, any sort of like wall hacks or anything like that, that's 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 a little bit beyond metagaming. Right. Yeah. But then there's yeah. there's some interesting stuff that like it, it sort of borders the line. And uh, what I mean by that That's weird, convoy. They shouldn't yeah, be disqualified know. though. If that's the case, that's just people not knowing that part of the map well. Right. I bet everybody yeah. freaking uses that spot now. Right. <laughs> or maybe it was something even the game designed. Oh, so here's here's another thing. Maybe it was something the game designers didn't know about, and now have they patched that spot out? That's a good question. Yeah, because if they patched that out, then then that's probably like one of those like uh, oversights of uh, the game developer. Right. Because sometimes that happens. It got okay. removed. Okay, so yeah, that's an oversight of the game developer. Right. So. It wasn't intended to be there and again that's that's like one of those those kinds of things again i don't think they should have been disqualified i think they should have fixed the program and let their title stand because again their knowledge is what won them the game and in a game that is tactically heavy your personal knowledge versus somebody else's personal knowledge is is more important than whether or not you could you know twitch click faster than them yeah personal opinion maybe that's because i don't like twitch clicking but that's me <laughs> It says, please do not climb the wall. <laughs> that's hilarious. Okay, that's pretty funny. <laughs> I like that. All right. Um, yeah, one of the things, like, that, like, sort of, it's, like, a metagaming knowledge thing, but it's, like, sort of one of those weird things is, like, uh, huh? <laughs> hey, Johnny. Uh, we're talking about metagaming versus role-playing. Um in in Morrowind, there's a there's a few interesting things you can do to sort of boost your skills, and uh, one of them, and I feel like knowing the combination itself is metagaming, but finding it out by accident wouldn't be metagaming. Right. It's a uh, soul trap on target one, and then any other spell makes that spell permanent. And it seems like a weird spell to make in the first place, but like if you did it by accident, like. I feel like, I don't know, it's sort of one of those weird things. Oh, uh, Cabbage, we're basically talking about sort of how, um, how sort of metagaming influences role-playing. And, like, how, um, you know, your, your experience in a playthrough can either be enhanced or, um, degraded by metagaming. Yeah, and, and also, like, how you can make RP choices that are technically, like, suboptimal. 
um, for like the purposes of like playing the game, even but that's because like that's the story you want to tell in this particular like playthrough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least generally speaking. Yeah. Um, I find I find that generally speaking, um, like aside from like the pitfalls that you can fall into with like video game metagaming, um, the the place where I really see a lot of like problems crop up with metagaming is is definitely like again on on that tabletop side of things mm. like because because there's like there's this whole thing about like about like people using uh like outside of character knowledge in order to gain an advantage like even outside of like that whole typical like D, &D trope thing where it's like gm versus players um because no lie, the GM always loses in that case. Because you you fight so hard to figure out like a way to beat your your the PCs in your game, and then there's four or five people working against you on that one. Unless you are just head and shoulders smarter than them, you're never going to win. Mm. Yeah, but unless, and it's, unless it's... you start doing like cheaty stuff, like where you're just like, oh yeah, well this guy doesn't like has an armor class that you just cannot beat. Um, <laughs> like, but that's not fun either. No, right? no, it's not. Like, that's just going like, oh, well, the Tarrasque rises out of the ground and I stomp you, motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> there's there's no challenge in that and there's no there's no payoff yeah. in, in something like that. But but sometimes it is it is hard. Like, you know, um, as someone who's, who's played a few um, role-playing games, like, I have some knowledge that definitely my characters wouldn't have right. and it would have definitely helped them out. Oh, um, yeah, and it was usually some, like, weird high, you know, like, physics science sort of knowledge and you know it's it's tough to be like okay my character doesn't know this right when it could like literally like save you know their lives right no absolutely um i find that it i find that it creates most tension when it's like player character versus play player character metagaming mm. so like like you've seen a, like so you have this i you have this idea that your character is evil, right? And your the rest of the group is like good, mm -hmm. and so you start doing things at the table that sort of signify, obviously, that you are evil. But you keep telling the party, "No, no, it's fine. I'm good." And then, like at some point, you have a scene in front of everybody else where you're talking to your dark god, uh, like, who cares, right? Like Cthulhu, um, and, and like. So you're having a conversation with Cthulhu. That would never happen. But say that, for instance, that's what you're doing. And then everybody else is like, we knew you were evil. And like the second their characters wake up the next day and like they just go, oh, by the way, we know you're evil and then kill you. Like that's not fun metagaming on the part of everybody else, right? Hmm. I see what you mean, Cabbage, yeah. It is, um, it is a little weird sometimes. Like, because it is, sometimes things can get, like, the battle of metagaming. Right. Like, and it doesn't even have to be about the game, it's almost who knows more outside knowledge. Right. And, 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 and that's, that's a tough one, because you want to, you want to stay true to your character, because that's what the most fun is had. Right. Ultimately, the more you metagame, the more you sort of, you know, take the story out and you take the adventure out and you just, it's more like collecting and it's a checklist rather than an actual playthrough. No, I, I hear that. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Um, especially if you're talking about loot that is, that is like not a random drop, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough thing. Right, like, even if it is a random drop, like, so I need this piece of gear. I know this this creature drops it. I have to go kill that creature, like, a million times until I get it. But, yeah, yeah it's, it's it's definitely a weird one, Cabbage, yeah. But, actually, you know what? Bakora just came in, and hi, how's it going? You mentioned something very funny, and you said, my playthroughs are 90% metagaming and 10% role-playing. And you're not wrong. <laughs> like, I'm just going to say it right now. You're not wrong because I am playing these games like for like the fifth 
or like sixth time sometimes. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of knowledge behind that. And I sort of know what I want to do in my playthrough before I even start. Um, and, you know, I know where a lot of these, you know, items are either from quests or lying around in a dungeon or something like that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you sort of try to act dumb not to ruin your own story. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's a weird thing. And I can, I can agree with that statement, Cabbage. Like, if the game does become more of a task than, than something that's uh, relaxing or entertaining for you, then, then it's not fun, and why would you do that? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. This is uh, this is Nico. He's, he's a jerk, so you may see him knock stuff down. Please forgive him. I won't. <laughs> hey, hey, stop that. Yeah, exactly, Cabbage, exactly. In, in the end, you want to relax and have fun. And there's, there's nothing more stressful than basically, like, having a laundry list of things you want to do in your video game or your role-playing experience. Like, I've got to do this and this and this and bring up this skill and that and that and that. And then it just becomes one of this weird thing where, like, well, shit, maybe I don't get this thing in time. And, and you sort of have to almost stress out about, you know, uh, just friggin' the lack your character could have if you don't do things correctly. Right, Quote, right. unquote. Um, and yes, yes, Cabbage, Nico does want to go bowling. He's going to use these glorious items on my shelf as his ball and whatever's below here as, as the pins. <laughs> oh boy. Friggin' A. But this is not about my cat. <laughs> I mean, we might have a stream where we just talk about our cats. I mean, let me write it down. <laughs> stream about Talk cats. show. The stream about cats. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That'll be a I future mean, episode. You'll probably get a lot of hits on that one, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's channels where they actually have a cat cam. No, yeah. Like, what is it? There's, um, there's like, two videos that are, like, 24-7 just streaming cat rooms on YouTube. Like, just all the time. Oh, oh nice. You're getting your TV tomorrow. That's awesome, Makora. <laughs> That's awesome. But, I mean, I, I can understand the whole cat can thing. Right, no, absolutely. It's like the zoo animals, except I don't know if I could watch a cat that long. Right. Because they sleep for a long time. They do. They do. I feel like <laughs> if we really wanted to get into something that would be really, really cool for, like, cat cams, it'd be like a GoPro on a cat. No, that would be awesome. That would be super cool. I'd be into that. Yeah. Just let the cat outside. GoPro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our luck, they would just, like, not do anything at all. Just go outside and, like, lay down in the sun. It would be vicious. My cat would, like... You would literally, like... I would have to put, like, like a, a trigger warning for gore. Like blood and gore, yeah. Because holy <laughs> shit. She she was an outside cat before I took her in, so holy crap. Anyway, that's another episode of, of when we that's talk about episode. our cats. We'll talk about cats another time. <laughs> but yeah, um... Yeah, no, like, what was it? There was a, there was a thing that happened uh, in one of our, um, in one of our recent role playing games where a uh, kid was trying to uh, like make some decision based completely on out of game knowledge, and you like completely called him on that shit. I, I thought that was hilarious at the time, but like as I keep thinking about it, I I, I just remember I, I remember being like. Or I rather, I feel like it was really impactful for him because he's since then stopped doing that so much. You know what it was? It was um and and I'll see you later, Bakora. And uh, I'll sure. see you later. Have a good one. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, but yeah, you know what? I had this this part in in my past and it resonated with me. Um, right. I, we we it was actually um, uh, Sirwolf and I in, in college. Uh, we had a um, mutants and masterminds role playing game, and um. I had a character who, yeah, yeah, he was running. I was playing. Yeah. Um, I didn't know if it was the one that you were running with all the crazy shit. <laughs> no, it was, it was the one you were running. Okay. And, and, and basically what happened was my character is, was insane, is insane, Still. but he had this thing where he could break the fourth wall, which made it a little bit more difficult to, to metagame because you're not sure what to include and what not. And there was a moment where we were all captured 
and I was trying to basically, like, use my metallurgy knowledge to break out of prison. Using the most convoluted, like, moistened hay piles in front of the bars, generating heat to create fire, and then using a water bucket to throw on the bars that were heated by the spontaneous combustion fire from the damp hay to then make them brittle enough that I could punch them. And it was like the most convoluted, like, fuck, what are you doing with my science metagaming ever? And it, like, you were straight up like, no, you don't fucking do that. You like scream at the top of your lungs, like for 15 minutes because you don't know what to do, basically. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you're right. I don't know what to fucking do. <laughs> and I shouldn't know what to fucking do. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm glad that it was like, a thing that like you you took in stride and that you were able to like learn from thing i am sorry that i actually did like just lose my shit at that moment <laughs> no no i mean one of the things you know when you're when you're doing any sort of heist or prison break or anything you don't want to like get overtaken by like someone's outside knowledge you want to have it be a challenging experience you just don't want to have someone be like i saw this fucking shit on oceans 11 we're gonna get out of here <laughs> or like some shit you know right right i mean the ultimately the easiest way to like dissuade that kind of argument like well i saw this on oceans 11 is just be like uh yeah where they had like modern equipment and you guys are like basically in your underwear what the fuck are you gonna do now <laughs> you, you just present them with the truth but yeah. like at the same time like I, I know exactly what you're talking about the character that you are playing just would not have had the like mental or like prowess to come up with this this idea and no training to like be able to like even conceive of like the plan that you had thought of and i was just sort of like okay how do you know how to do that yeah exactly yeah <laughs> and 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 then again if the answer is a little bit <laughs> yeah, yeah if the answer is i watched on the discovery channel and the reply is What's tvs the aren't invented yet <laughs> right What's the discovery <laughs> then something's fucked up there yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no like but, like, it doesn't even have to be, like, outside knowledge uh, that, like, you bring in that, like, is for problem solving. Sometimes it's just about, like, the things you do to interact with other people. Mm. Like, like, I know this thing about your character that you haven't actually told my character and I have no way to know about. But I'm going to act upon it because I know it's true. Mm. And, like, that always feels real shitty when it happens to you at like during a role-playing game like you're 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 playing and you're like oh yeah i've got this secret everybody else knows about this secret but their characters don't know about the secret it's super fun and then somebody out of left field is like well i know so my character knows so fuck you i'm taking away your fun yeah yeah and like i personally hate that shit like, I hate it when other players are shitty and don't want, or, and, like, try to intentionally take away your fun to to just be a dick. <laughs> well, I mean, there, there are ways to avoid that as the GM. You can, like, take a certain character into another room, send them a text message or secret yeah. message of some sort. Absolutely. But, There's no, also... I, I totally know what you mean, where basically what is supposed to be inside knowledge or just one person's knowledge suddenly becomes the groups and that secret really isn't a secret anymore right but like i so i i've been i've been trying to take a uh oh i think i think the google hangouts that like there's oh. uh actors directors oh sorry did i skip yeah he skipped a little okay i'll i'll back up just a second but yeah so there's like there's a few different positions you can take in role-playing games so you've got like actor director and then audience and like the director is typically your gm and the actor is usually your player but then there's everybody collectively experiencing the game together and like that group thing that you come up with is your audience members and like i personally like playing the game to find out what you guys are thinking and like what your characters are going to do when i present you guys with challenges and I also like it when you guys like tell me stuff about your character or do stuff about your care with your characters that like surprise me. And I'm just sort of like, holy shit, that's amazing. And when you guys do that, when you do that and then somebody at the table is like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm going to use this information that you've just shared with us, the audience as, as the actor portraying my character. 
and 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 like fuck some shit up hmm. i hate that yeah like that is that is that is taking away some of the fun as opposed to allowing your character to like be taken in by that information it's like a metagame trap it is it is actually like a metagame trap and that's where that's where like the real distinct part of it for like role-playing tabletop games really comes in and gets like hard focused yeah like when you fall into the metagame trap and and you want to do something to like fix or help or prevent somebody else from doing something you're you're limiting the amount of fun that you can actually have mm-hmm yeah, just bugs me. Just bugs me a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um and my green screen is it's rectangular with curved edges. Um basically it has the ability to um sort of like there are certain hampers where I can actually just take it from both ends, twist it into a figure eight, and then fold it in on itself into a nice compact thing. Space saving. As opposed to like painting a whole wall green or having a curtain. Right. Although, a green screen curtain would be cool. I think that's what most streamers use. Right. It just so well, happens that for Google Hangouts, for some reason, it um, the aspect ratio of the camera is larger, uh, and it's actually uh, aspect, aspect ratio smaller when I stream. So you'll notice when I stream that like, you won't see this corner over here. If I can bump, oh, I bump the lamp there. <laughs> By the way, speaking of role-playing... I have to thank Saberwolf. Oh, no! You weren't supposed to wait until Christmas! You were supposed to How wait. was I supposed to know? Because I, I told you! I texted you and I was like, dude, have your mom wrap that shit. Did you? <laughs> yes! I must have missed that text. Oh, no! Oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, it's early. <laughs> it's early! Look what I got from Saberwolf. Oh, gosh, it's backwards oh. for you guys. But it's fate accelerated and fate core with fate dice. Of course, you can't see shit because I'm using like a really weird like capturing layout where essentially you're seeing the small camera of the Google Hangouts. But yeah. it's mostly readable. Yeah, it's mostly readable. <laughs> We're gonna. Oh, yeah. Um. No, nah, man. Like. Yeah, we we you just. You just kept saying how you uh, how you wanted those physical dice, and I was just like, "Well, I mean, if we're gonna play more Fate, <laughs> might as well get you the whole outfit." <laughs> I know, you, you, I friggin' need it, man. <laughs> For sure. Thanks, that way you man. don't get stuck with those shit ass dice rollers that only give you like minus two and lower. <laughs> they were awful, yeah. And there there is some there is something about is there, there's almost like a weird like pseudo metagaming about like dice rolling too, isn't? Oh yeah, there? no, absolutely. When you can when you can see the random uh, number generation. It kind of takes a little bit of the uh, of the magic of video games away. Yeah, because like it's not it's not just like oh why did I miss when I was swinging my sword at that uh, at that uh, what are those things? Kumo, Kwama, Kwama, Kwamas. <laughs> yeah, when I was swinging my sword at that Kwama, it's just a grub. I shouldn't miss it. But when you see that you're rolling and like you when you are physically rolling dice and you're like oh well that's a five. Yep, then it makes that's sense. Five. Like it, it, it takes away some of that mystery. Hmm. But yeah, no, like I, I definitely understand what you mean when you say like that there's a sort of uh, that there's sort of like a metagaming element to that. But that's because you're in in charge, so to speak, of your uh, of your random number generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. <laughs> I actually, I actually sometimes like to put um, random number generation for like. for like random loot onto players i think that's fun right just guys roll a whole bunch of dice you tell me what you get and i will tell you what comes off of this table and and like they do and i tell them and they're like oh why couldn't i have rolled better or oh man that was so fucking good <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. and, and like there's i don't know there's some weird sense of satisfaction when you generate the numbers that either give you the uh uh, the the fat loots that you got or some sense of acceptance when you roll like shit and you don't get the fat loots that you wanted yeah so i mean that's i don't know that's an interesting thing i think i i think at some point when we play games with more loot 
that's uh, that's something I'm going to have you guys do on our, on our Friday game. Yeah, and, and loot in and of itself is also a metagaming thing as well. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Because depending on because there's there's random loot and there's there's placed loot which you know you you have knowledge of. I mean, one of the one of the huge exploits that you can use in uh, some like Bethesda games is not all containers are you know set to have crap in them. Some of them are meant to have something a little bit better, and so you could always either be outside of the cell or quick save before you access that container, and then basically you could just reload until you get something cool out of it. Right. Um, to take it somewhere that's not just Bethesda, the same thing can really be said of games like Pokemon too, right? Because like you know where certain Pokemon are found and there's a certain percent chance to find them. That's a metagame knowledge that you can use to your benefit. And you know, some like that's I feel like that's an instance where metagaming is actually kind of important. It is. It is. Because like, you wouldn't know where. you could catch a Giacchini in Pokemon Sun at all unless you looked it up somewhere. Right. <laughs> It's like, yeah. like one of my favorite Pokemon that I have right now is um, uh, Toxapex. And that is probably one of the most convoluted, like, things to catch in this game because it's off the shore of Mele Mele Island, which you don't have Surf. Like, you have to actually come back with Lapras or Sharpedo, depending on when you come back. And, right. and you have to be on, like, the beach. And not only that, you have to... Basically, you have to have Corsola, right, as the Pokemon that originally appears, and then SOS Toxapex. Yep. That's how you catch it. It's, like, so fucking convoluted, but it's one of my favorite Pokemon, and I, I that metagaming, I feel like, was totally fucking worth it. Right, right. Almost as uh, as convoluted as catching um, Gumi, the, like, slime dragon Pokemon, which yep. you have to, like, catch in natural rain at night when like something sos is like it's ridiculous yeah and i feel like, like it's a one in fourth chance even when it rains or something it, yeah it's like a one percent chance for it to arrive for the sos <laughs> freaking one hell. in 100 times it will be gumi Again, with the other stipulations of it having to be at nighttime and it has to be raining and it can't be like a Pokemon effect or, or Pokemon move raining. Yeah, it has to be actually raining in game. Right. Yeah. It's. I would call that incredibly convoluted. Personally. Yeah, like if I was to like, and, and this is actually really funny because, you know, I started gaming before good, uh, like, game facts or or guides were online yeah, yeah. and like if, if we were back then when you know dial-up still sounded like beep, doo -doo 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 -beep, uh then like i wouldn't know how to catch those pokemon and there'd just be like empty entries in my pokedex and so be like well what the hell am i supposed to do i i accidentally goomy right like i didn't i didn't know anything about it like i didn't think it was actually in the pokedex at all and then i found it i was like oh hey this, and that's this that's when you start to get like the whole like playground rumors and stuff like that or 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 uh, water cooler talk right, like right. oh man i caught this fucking pokemon last night right, right you know if you go and uh you use strength on the truck that's uh after you surf near the uh the ss the ss and you can you can find a mewtwo underneath in a pokeball <laughs> bullshit bullshit that wasn't real that was not real <laughs> hey cabbage <laughs> welcome back you still have not played Pokemon Sun? It's... You're missing out, Con. You're yeah. missing out. It's pretty damn good. I mean, it's it's kind of short for a Pokemon game, but sometimes Pokemon games needed to be shorter. Yeah, I can understand that. There, there, there were some that were just too long. Yeah. I'm still waiting for, like, the old penultimate friggin' Pokemon game where all 802 Pokemon are present in the world. Poison has a, uh, sorry, my drink is really sour at the end. Um, <laughs> so, po uh, Poison has a uh, has a an ultimate dream for Pokemon as well. She wants like, she wants like Pokemon Globe basically, where like you start off in Kanto, or you can start off in any of the regions basically, and then you can go to all of the other regions. That would be so badass, right? 
So it's like you just mash all the games together, but you give them a unified graphic scheme and, and like just make the Pokedex enormous. That That's what she's waiting for. The treacherous, the, uh, the tutorials IV. Oh no, I've, I, I've been through. Oh yeah, he, the treacherous tutorials. Um, they're not, it, it actually, the tutorial for like Pokemon Sun is actually kind of long. <laughs> If you think about it, like, you don't get, like, all the menus and stuff to, like, Second Island. Right. Yeah, that's true. Just have fun with it, though. Right. No, for sure. Like, I went in with very few expectations for, for Sun and Moon, mostly because I was like, okay, it's another Pokemon game. And it, like, surprised me by how deep the, uh, or rather, with how deep the uh, the story actually gets and how surprising it, it was to, to play through. Uh, honestly, like, it's probably my favorite story of any Pokemon I've played so far. Definitely. Which is crazy, because you never thought you'd be, like, applauding the story elements of a Pokemon game. <laughs> that was how I felt about it. But, um, but I mean, okay, and that's, like, a kind of metagame kind of thing, too. Because you go into Pokemon, and you're like, oh, I can expect the same gameplay that I've always expected. Updated graphics, new moves and stuff, and I can, like, make a cool team but I'm not expecting a whole lot of like RP elements to come in. And granted, even in Sun and Moon, I, I, I don't actually have any hard evidence to support this next claim, but bear with me. I don't think that the choices like in dialogue that you make actually affect how anybody responds to you. But how fucking cool would that be? But how cool would that be? <laughs> is that where Pokemon is going, right? <laughs> Uh, that would be actually kind of cool that you could actually have multiple Pokemon playthroughs based on the actions of your character. Pokemon the RPG. I'd be down for that. I'd be down for that too. I'd be down for that so hard. <laughs> they're, they're sort of getting there, right? Like you, the like character creation is very rudimentary at this point, but it is in fact character. Like, like you pick your character's physical appearance now. Like, there's this whole weird like metagame or meta thing about Pokemon where there are certain expectations that you have and Sun and Moon kind of like grinds against them in certain ways. Mm -hmm. And and like I like that direction. I like the way they're they're proceeding with the way they're expecting the uh, the franchise to move forward. Yeah. If they eventually get to the point where they're doing Pokemon the RPG, fucking awesome. Let's have a new like <laughs> like uh, immersion discussion about like how Pokemon feels better now than it used to. <laughs> I mean, like how cool would it be if at some point you can actually like choose to join like team rocket or whatever, instead of just having to always fight against them. Yeah. Yeah. Like you actually choose the, the, like you fight for the, the governing faction of, of whatever you want to rule that part of, of, of the Pokemon world. Okay. People. Multiple endings in Pokemon. Make it happen. I'm asking you now, Game Freak. <laughs> Freaking A. That would that would be so cool. Wouldn't it? <laughs> Fucking Caesar's Legion of Pokemon. Right? <laughs> Basically what they are, right? <laughs> Holy shit. Um, Wouldn't it be cool, though? Like, But yeah, I mean, you know, kind of like, I haven't played the game, but yeah, Undertale has like, what is it? Um, homicide, or what is it? Murder everything, uh, make friends with everything, or neutral. And they all have, like, different endings and stuff. Right, right. And, uh, and Convoy, I have not played Pokemon Online. No, I haven't either. But, yeah, like, I think that, that would be a very a very interesting thing. Like, if you choose to join Team Rocket, and then you go and you beat the Elite Four, and then at the end you're just like, well, I'm the baddest trainer there is. All of you disband. There is no more Pokemon League. All there is is Team Rocket. <laughs> or yeah, you start like uh, you start just putting Pokemon, or you start, or start putting like Rocket, um, Team Rocket in the position of the Elite Four, and right, start that taking cool. that over. Genocide, French Bar Neutral. Gotcha. I only watched like one playthrough, so I only know like the. I think it was a neutral playthrough because they didn't realize that it was important to to either choose friendship or genocide <laughs> <laughs> and so literally killing one thing changed the entire scope of the playthrough it's interesting right but yeah no like and, and again like those are 
and, and, and like multiple endings is definitely like a metagame choice, right? Oh no, totally. Yeah. But like, that's, that's one of those metagame choices that you, and, and there's two ways to learn about it. Either online or you've played through it once and you're curious about what it would be like the next time, but with all your choices made a different way. Exactly. And like, I find it, I find I like that style of play like when i when i'm given like basically two opposite ends of morality like however that is like good or bad or like with or like lawful or or like criminal or whatever mm -hmm. like you, you you're presented with these two ends of an axis and then you like go in and you make decisions based like you you meta choose to be good or bad instead of picking like whatever seems fitting in the moment and, and that's like, not so meta gaming that's role playing that is role playing. You're allowing the meta choice of which way do I want to end the game to affect your role playing decision of like what choices do I make during the game. Yeah. Like that that's where the two fit together the nicest, I think. Yeah, and um, it's it's very interesting that you'd think that metagaming and role playing is is very, very far apart. But in fact, the influences of metagaming can enhance your role playing. Legit. Yeah. Legit. Or or at least yeah, like if you're, if you've made the meta choice to like go one way or another, it doesn't necessarily enhance your role playing, but it enhances your story because certain games rely upon a a particular like definite meta choice to like go good or bad. Yeah. If you try and go that middle route, a lot of the times in those games, that tends to be less fulfilling. Yeah, yeah, it, it is true. It's it's tough to do a, a mid middle playthrough. Um, anybody who's played Knights of the Old Republic, like the good endings versus the bad endings, like these are these are two ways that the game ends basically. And like, if you try and go the middle ground, you get a less satisfying ending. Same thing happens in uh, Infamous, and not really so much Mass Effect. Mass Effect kind of ends with a ridiculous bang, no matter what. But the hilarious thing about Mass Effect is that it has a meta story across three different games. So your choices in game one are still affecting things that happen in game three. Like, and you can specifically choose more optimal or less optimal choices in earlier games to affect your later gameplay. And like that gets into a whole level of like, like not Freaking even like cross game, cross platform yeah. metagaming RP. Exactly. Freaking like, a. It's insane. It gets, it gets really insane sometimes. That's freaking crazy. But I, but I tell you what, man. Oh, we're actually getting a, a little bit of a dropped frame issue. Are we? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's stable now. It's only like 0.77%, so it only dropped 1,000 frames and it hasn't stopped, so I think we're good. Okay. Are we good now, guys? Hello? Well... Ooh. I'm looking at I'm looking at the stream. It doesn't look good. <laughs> it doesn't. Oh no. Huh. It's real choppy. Oh, it looks like it's getting better now. Okay, yeah. It it oh well. It decreased. What? Oh, I guess the time. Oh. It, it's like what? How can you decrease the percentage of drop frames? Oh yeah, a second <laughs> went by. Right, right. Um, That's how percentages work. <laughs> percentages can sometimes be meta gaming too. Card is counting true. is the is best true. metagaming. Right, right. George, with regard to ERP, that's not the topic for today. So I'm what, gonna what is it. ERP? Erotic role playing. That is that is very different. It is very different. <laughs> that's very different. You need a whole new D D book for that. They have it. They it's I know, I'm I'm it. saying it's a, it's a, it's available. It is. There's also a game called Fatal. I do not suggest anybody read or play it, but if you're interested, look it up. It's like, I think it's like five to 700 pages long. And like, there are random tables for your dick length and girth. Can you metagame that? Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> you can absolutely metagame that. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh man. That's crazy. Right, how's it going? Hey, damn fat. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Man. But no, like, so... There, there's a whole sub-community of, of 
people and games that like revolve around the ERP thing. Um, that we're not gonna get into. We're not gonna get into it specifically. <laughs> Again, that's a whole different stream topic, and probably not one that we will ever really broach in like honest. Nope. But like. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of shit out there if you're willing to look for it and you can endure having it, like, stained into your brain. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bleach doesn't take out stains from brains, by the way. Nope, nope, it sure doesn't. Although, you can go to iBleach.com and enjoy some delicious eye bleach. <laughs> what? Do you need me to link it to you, Vink? What does that even mean? Eye bleach? Yeah, what's the... Eye bleach? It's, like... A, you've seen something terrible that you want to forget about. You go to iBleach.com and it helps you forget about those things. Is it like just cute puppies and stuff? Well, that's um, that's like the safe version. But no, there's one that's... It, iBleach.com is basically like uh, is basically like hot chicks doing like semi-erotic things. Oh, okay. Nothing, nothing explicit. Gotcha. It's also... Well, it's, I wouldn't say it's safe for work. But <laughs> <laughs> people would look at that at work and be like, what are you doing? But... But no, like, it's it's at the very least not... Like, your parents would walk in and want to have a talk with you as opposed to, like, take away your internet privileges. Okay. Um, but, like, there's, there's, like, the cute version, which is, like, puppies and kitties being cute and stuff. And then there's, like, I Bleach for Ladies, which is, like, dudes being sexy. And, like, if that's your thing, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Dang right, George. <laughs> Oh gosh! Yeah, no, nah, man. <laughs> where did where did this talk show go? <laughs> well, we never mind. Let's not get into the, like the backtracking of where things were. Nope. Let's keep going. So let's head back to meta gaming because I feel like we veered slightly off of the path. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the things is is I do a lot of playthroughs on Twitch. And uh, right. I do a lot of the same games on Twitch. Um, which, some... which is why, like, metagaming is important for your Twitch stream, right? It is. It is. And, and and one of the things that I do when I stream is I actually, like, I pretend that I forgot that certain things are happening. Right. Because I totally know what's going to happen. Sometimes I'll forget, like, certain nuances, but... I totally know it's going to happen. Right. And I'm trying to act dumb and sometimes even surprised <laughs> because I want that to come off as, like, a cool thing for my character. Right. That, like, this is a new thing for my character, even though it might be the fifth the fifth or sixth time I'm trying to, to, uh, to do this thing. No, absolutely. And, like, that's... That's legit, right? Like, the only... I, I generally approach games that way as well, especially ones that I've played multiple times. The the times when I don't is when I'm starting to get frustrated. But again, that, that like, delves into that whole thing that we were talking about earlier. Like, like metagaming can be used to enhance your, your, your fun during play. Mm -hmm. So, like... You know where a... Uh, you know where a person's coming... Or going to, like, come through a... Um, as like support later on so you like drop you like drop a uh you know like a a motion detector like c4 or or landmine or or rune or whatever like you know something's coming out of this place so you prepare for them in advance before you trigger the thing that's going to like set off that thing yeah that way you can head off some problems that you're going to have down the way now like sometimes it's just smart like sometimes you like you've never been in an area, and I've seen this happen on uh, on your Skyrim playthroughs a few times, where you're just like, "This looks like a place where a Draugr would explode out of." I'm just gonna drop a rune on it and see if it explodes. That's one of my favorite things to do. Right. By the way, yeah. I'm not even sure that might be a little meta gaming. It it definitely is a little meta gaming because you're like looking at it and going like, "Game designers probably put an enemy in this thing." I'm gonna like go ahead and hedge my bets. That's definitely meta gaming. Yeah, but and like, and the fact bad. that runes interact with with um, non-activated characters. Exactly. Now, there's also 
this uh, this other thing that happens where it's kind of also playing into the role playing aspect of it a little bit because your character has seen this happen so many times throughout like lots of dungeons, right? Yeah. Like, oh look, there's a crypt or there's like a, a tomb. It's like standing up, and I've seen Draugr explode out of these things a whole fuckload of times already. Sometimes they wait for whatever reason. I'm going to go ahead and be cautious and I'm going to like nuke it before they do anything. Like that is the thing that your character could have learned. Yeah. yeah. And like, I, I've seen it happen to, to you a couple times whilst playing. You're just sort of like, that looks like a place where a drugger might come out of. Not that you know that it's definitely going to come out of it. You're just like, a drugger might come out of that. And you're just like, blam and drop a room. That that's, again sort of outside of that metagame thing because you don't know yeah you're just you're just pretty sure based on past, past knowledge and that is like your metagame knowledge but also the character's metagame knowledge based on what you guys have experienced IRL and, metagame knowledge in game what <laughs> <laughs> the role playing exceeds be or extends beyond my character and into myself <laughs> Oh gosh. Where does yeah. the metagaming begin? <laughs> right. Where does it begin and where does it end? It's all weird. No, like, but that shit happens sometimes. No, totally, yeah. It, it's it's And I feel like it's it's always a battle of of I, I I cross the line a lot. I really do. There are certain dungeons I know shit goes down and right. rather than be frustrated and die a ton, I know how to prepare myself so that it won't be half as difficult right and that's like that's like true metagaming that is true metagaming right but, but then you've got it that, is like, sometimes weird. very badass depending on the amount of explosions that is true the more explosions the more badass and the more acceptable the metagame is <laughs> but like but then you also run into this thing where like you the player have knowledge about how the game is built which is also kind of intrinsically built into the character because they've gone on the adventures to build that information with you. Mm. There, there's like that weird toss up thing where, where like learn, like learning and experience for you and your character at some point reach a singularity where your experience is basically equivalent to the character's experience. And I feel like that is so true in your first playthrough of a game. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Like, like that that is when your knowledge from your character and you are exactly the same. And ultimately, if a if a if a role playing experience allows multiple playthroughs, your job and your ultimate goal is to make it feel like it's the first time you're playing that game, even though it's the second time you're playing that game. Or the third. Or, or the, the third, or the fourth, or the fifth, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and as to why we're not talking about MMORP, uh, George, I mean, like, we can a little bit. Um, I don't have a whole lot of experience with, like, uh, with MMORP, mostly because when I'm playing an MMO, I'm playing the metagame. Yeah, exactly. I, I get heavily into the metagame when I when I play right. as well. It's, 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 all, it's about, all about the loot, communication with other players. The drop chance. I'm not making, like choices based on my character and stuff like that usually like i look at my map and i go okay these are places i haven't explored that's where i can get xp like these are like mmos are so heavily involved in the metagame that like and it actually ties into something that cabbage was talking about earlier like when you get home and like you you treat your mmo like it's a second job and this happens to wow players a lot um because like they get home and they're like, well, I got to start grinding so I can be ready for that raid. Like that, that kind of thing happens an awful lot for, for people who are playing MMOs. Now I know that there's a very strong sub community within MMORPGs where the RP is real and like, that's a thing. And like, I, I've, I've done it before. Like I've, I've got like, like I've I've played WoW and I've like set up all the RP like add-ons and stuff so that I can so that I can have like different outfits for like different places that I go to because there's a community of people who are there who I role play with. But ultimately I don't stick with that very long because I end up just wanting to progress my level. Like 
and, and and ultimately that's that's where I land with the MMORP like discussion, right? That while it is a very while while it is a fun thing to do, it is time I'm spending in the MMO role playing, which doesn't do anything for me. Versus getting more fat loot, which does do something for me. And you know, I feel like if you are going to role play in an MMO, that's an entirely different playthrough. Like, that's right. an entirely different focus. That's beyond the XP, that's beyond the loot, that's beyond raiding, organized, you know, sort of things like that. And that's... Definitely. I haven't done that, um, and it might be fun, but I, I haven't done it personally. But, you know, there, there are um, servers, like, in certain games just for role-playing. And that's, like, when people are like, I'm a fucking baker, even though this is, like, a shoot 'em up game. Deal with oh, it. <laughs> right and um, like, yeah i forget convoy how to do it in morrowind the hot keys all i know is that in your uh one of the things i used to do in morrowind was you can have your next spell and previous spell be linked to your scroll up and scroll down so literally while playing the game you can use the scroll wheel to scroll through spells it's pretty awesome but yeah, I, I I think yeah, yeah, F one is hotkeys. Yeah. It's different in every game, it's it's tough. And right. of course of course I'm playing more Oblivion where it's like it is Morrowind, but it's not Morrowind, and I'm like, oh how do you do it? What do you what do you mean, George? You say that you uh that you usually get frowned upon by uh for just going out and playing the mmo and then coming back like super casual but like do you mean that you get frowned upon by the other role players or you get frowned upon by the people who are like who who are who are like playing the game just to play the game versus like just showing up and being like casually role playing like i'm, I'm just i'm a little bit confused about like, yeah yeah me too <laughs> there's like two sides of the coin i don't know what's what right, right. I don't know which one you're talking about <laughs> um but yeah like and then there's like i feel like at some point you can't or not you can't but like i personally with mmos can't get i can't get past a point of like casual like casualness that i have about playing games in order to like really get good at like an mmo like because because i just want to show up and have fun a bit and like kill some uh kill some shit and get some xp and like maybe get some cool loot but like at the same time i will always be worse like with my character and with my gear and shit than the people who are willing to sit down and spend six to eight hours a day playing that game and going as hard as they can to like get better yeah, and uh, George, you just said it was the role players who frown upon you. Fuck the those guys. Players. Right, no, fuck them. You like, have to advance your story somehow, and sometimes that requires going into a dangerous cave or something. Because, fuck it. If you're in a world where dangerous caves and shit exists... Go, go get some go, get, go do it. Just do it. Because <laughs> holy take, shit. Take the other role players into the dangerous cave with you there you go find, find like an in-game reason to like make that like a role play there you go that's the way to do it metagame the role play <laughs> metagame the role play fuck yeah there we go now we're talking there we go <laughs> but no totally if there was a fucking dangerous cave that i knew about nearby and it had like fucking monsters and there's treasure down there i'd fucking go i right. might die but i'd fucking go and do it even if it was just garden implements and shit that i was wielding right Hopefully the shit in the cave is better than those garden implements, unless it's like, unless it's like a rake of rending. That would be devastating if every single rake slice, like every single rake part sliced like a katana. That'd be awful. You would literally like Julianne I... people alive. Anyways. 
using strange cooking terms to describe gore, like right. Julianne <laughs> people. <laughs> oh, damn it! There's like. Is there's... it Dan Fat? <laughs> or Dan Pet? Sorry, I call you Dan Fat all the time. It's an emote from Dan's Gaming, and it looks so similar. Sorry about that. I know you're Dan Pat. I just. Hey, oh. Ah, I saw it. Did you see that? Cats, man. That was my way of the Jedi book. You douchebag. Excuse me for a moment. So, yeah, exactly, exactly, Birchie. No, just don't care. Don't even, don't even, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 a balance, really. Yeah, it's it's a balance with role playing. Um, and, and metagaming because yeah, it's, it's either you do too much metagaming and then it becomes a checklist or sometimes you do too much role-playing and you don't go anywhere. Like right. there are, I've, I've heard of people in Skyrim who literally they get married and they have a family and they basically just play Hearthfire DLC and like roam around their house doing home improvement. And I'm like, you do that for six hours? <laughs> and then I go out and I hunt for deer. And then I come back and I cook it. And I'm like, what? And then I go to a store and buy salt. And, and you know, like, then you just go fucking nuts. And that's that's when you have to kill Draugr. Right. No, absolutely. Especially if, like, those Draugr show up and kill your, uh, your wife and kids. Then you have to seek vengeance on them. There you go. That's when you spice up roleplay with vengeance. There <laughs> There's nothing that spices up roleplay like vengeance. I know Dan Pat. Again, he's a jerk. <laughs> Again, you'll you guys will have to forgive my cat because I won't. He he's been too much of a jerk for too long for me to give any fucks about like forgiving him for stuff. Oh, home improvement. <laughs> oh man. But anyways, yeah. So like there, there are there are definitely ways to like take one side of the role play metagame like thing too far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you need to come up with the, the best balance that makes it the most fun for you. Legit. That makes it always feel like you're playing the game for the first time, but not getting your balls ripped off at the same time. Right. Legit. Like. <laughs> There's a certain amount of distance you can give yourself from, like, your, your knowledge about a game in order to, like, in order to experience a thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then that's ultimately what, what you want to achieve. You want to get to a place where it's fine to, like, know that, uh, who the fuck's that guy? Uh, the guy falls out of the sky in Morrowind and, like, you can take the scrolls of Ikari in flight off of him. Like, Fuck it, that's, that's my favorite cool. part. That's like a quintessential part of all of my playthroughs is eventually I try to get the mentor's ring. And, you know, it's it's this formulaic thing that I do every single time and I don't get tired of it. Even though it's totally a metagaming, I'm going here to get the ring and I'm going to get the scroll of Incarian Flight here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cabbage, that's, that's how it goes. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's an interesting balance, really. Um, yeah, especially, like, you know, my experiences with Morrowind and Oblivion and stuff, where I know where I'm going to get certain things. But when I'm streaming, I try to make it so that I'm doing those quests or getting those items because it will make my character a better character, not a better um, NPC, basically, almost. <laughs> Right, no, for sure. Because you don't want to just turn into, like, the main NPC. You want to be a character. Right. And yeah, I, th I think ultimately that's the goal. Yeah. Like, get to a place where your character feels important and that their story is, like, what is what is really the, the point of the game. Mm -hmm. And that it's unique. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Doing so in a way... Oh, God. This, this is just a change. Pardon me, guys. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna mute us real quick. Okay. 
We'll, we'll hear what's going on over there. His his cats. I've been to his house before. His cats are just they're 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 they go they go crazy. They're 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 a lot smaller than my cats, and I wasn't used to it. But they have a lot more energy, uh, so they they go mental. He has two cats, by the way. But yeah, <laughs> role play club penguin. <laughs> I've not played that game, but I've I've seen memes about it. Um, but yeah, I mean yeah, it's it's it's. It's a balance, the metagaming versus role-playing. What what are you doing with that? Oh, is he in it? Oh, oh, is it? Oh, he's, yep, yeah, okay. His cats are trying to get his attention to, you know, the you've got to play with me now sort of situation. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so... Several years ago, Nico decided that he really, really likes the plastic spiders that come in the uh, the like web decoration that comes on Halloween. Yeah. So they don't last all year. So I bought 180 of them. I'm just slowly going through it as he destroys and or loses all of them. <laughs> hmm. So. Yeah, whenever he uh, whenever he gets too obnoxious, I just grab one of those and uh, and throw them, and uh, he chases them and returns them just like a puppy. That's pretty awesome, actually. It's pretty nice if he will routinely return them. Sometimes he will just chase them, and then like attack them and like chew on them a little, and then leave them there and walk over to me and be like, "Hey, why aren't you gonna throw that spider?" <laughs> I'm just like, because you left it across the room, you dick. <laughs> that one seems to be very dead, and I'm <laughs> bored with it now. Right. Throw in a live one. <laughs> He's just like, that ain't my problem. Go get it and throw it again. A perfect companion for a cat would actually be a necromancer. A perfect companion for a cat? Yeah. So you're playing the cat? Cats rule the world. And oh, they have yeah. a necromancer. <laughs> and they resurrect mice for them so that even though they kill the mouse, they can resurrect it and then they... Infinite mouse. And then they have a zombie mouse. Then they have a zombie mouse. Not a mouse! That would be hilarious. <laughs> Swag penguin for 20 <laughs> points. Oh my god, Jan Pat. <laughs> ERP Club Penguin. I don't even know how you would manage to do so, but kudos. Kudos. I bet there's a lot of good penguin puns. <laughs> Funky penguin 6969. <laughs> oh my god. Oh shit. <laughs> so yeah, like there's there's a whole lot of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. but anyways so about the uh about like the whole metagaming thing like i don't i don't know like how how much i don't know how much more we've really got about that topic but like no i, I think we covered a lot of it i think we did too like it that seems that seems pretty solid just that like finding a happy medium between like the metagame of exactly what the gameplay is like and then like the role play to keep yourself satisfied and happy like just that happy medium is really where you need to find and some like it's going to be individualized right like oh um, yeah like sometimes you need more metagames sometimes you need more role play like it, and that's where you get like those those guys who really want the, like the immersive mods and stuff like i have to eat every day like three times yeah or like i have to drink water for like fallout 4 and stuff like those that that's when you've like taken the metagame like this is something the game doesn't support. I need it to be in my game to make my role play better. Yeah. Like th these are people who recognize where they need that shit more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's where you need more uh yeah, more role play as opposed to meta. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nico. He he's he doesn't want this right now. He wants to like be up and running, but I'm No, I I totally know. I pick up my cats too <laughs> hoping one day they might want to be held for more than 2 minutes. He, he does sometimes like sometimes he will just like sometimes he will come over to me and like curl up and okay hold on eh, eh. 
<laughs> he really doesn't want to right now. There we go. Cat. <laughs> All right, here you go, buddy. Um, but yeah, no, like, some, sometimes he will just, like, curl up on me and, and, like, won't move for hours. Lily will do that until I move her. That's just that. Yeah. <laughs> I wish... I wish I could metagame my cats. They've learned to metagame me. It's so. called behavioral biology, I believe. Yeah, there's 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 behavioral biology, and then there's uh, then there's behavioral psychology. Either one would be applicable. Um, it's it's just difficult. <laughs> cats are really resistant to uh, to like psychological training um, because they have a particular behavior that they want to subscribe to and it's hard to get them to like change that that like position that they're in have you tried uh ink blots i haven't <laughs> i actually got some ink i could like i could like sit down and do some of that for you guys on stream if you want <laughs> and nico what do you see in this ink blot nico, I... tell me what you see in this ink blot uh, and nico's like Meow. i see and how does it remind you of your mother? <laughs> I like how we immediately go into Freudian accents as soon as we start talking about psychology. Oh, that's the best. Um, I mean, like, I can I can do some, like, modern psychology. I don't have to do a Freudian accent for it. But if we're talking about ink plots, I absolutely have to talk about a Freud accent. <laughs> oh, shit. It's just required. It is, yes. It is. One of the reasons why I couldn't actually go professionally into being like a psychologist. Because you'd have to actually have an accent the whole time. I would have to have an accent, yeah. It's a requirement. They didn't tell me this at the outset of my uh, of like my college program that I had to have an accent in order to become a true psychiatrist. Man, if I'd known four years of my life. We're gonna. <laughs> But no, so I had to go into clinical psychology. So I learned how people learn, not how to help them learn. <laughs> but anyways. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, so aside from psychologically conditioning my cats. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting creative stream. <laughs> that would be an interesting creative stream. Just like, oh my god, that would be amazing. Actually, I kind of want to <laughs> that would be pretty fucking cool. We just we just trade off like you do one like thing and then I do another. Oh my god, it'd be so good. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna write it down. <laughs> I don't think we'll ever get to it, but I'm writing No. <laughs> Psychologically oh. conditioning our cats for a great Right. I have pre-death notes written down on our creative list. I don't know what the fuck we were thinking when we wrote that down. What? Yeah, pre-death notes. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I don't know. That's weird. Oh, anyways, uh, conditioning the cats. Oh, the pre-death notes. The, the, like, like, you're writing something and being chased by a oh, monster right, and you, you right, write right. dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like write a thing down that will help me remember what the fuck that's about later. It's, it's in every single video game. They always have a note on the ground, and they have enough time to apparently like write, "Oh shit, something's behind me." Right, right. It happened. It like that was a trope that uh, or rather, okay, I'm gonna say this, and it's probably not correct. So somebody correct me if you know. I think that. Uh, H.P. Lovecraft was one of the first people to, like, really take that on. Because, like, he would do that all the time. Like, it, it was, like, a standard thing. Like, he would just have his protagonist, like, writing up until the point that, like, he was being consumed by some horrible monster. Like, is actually, like, being eaten currently and is still writing, like, oh, God, the agony. It's, like, you know, like, et cetera, et cetera. I can feel its gnashing teeth, like, cr you know, like crushing my bones, like, kind of shit. So, like being eaten and like like holding feverishly onto their desk and like still jotting away notes about how terrible the situation is again i think that it was lovecraft that came up with the convention he might just be a huge proponent of that particular type of writing uh and like somebody else originally came up with it but he's like the earliest author i can think of who did it mm. oh well <laughs> yep yep 
And uh, and yeah, Leo Fire, that was a weird part of this conversation to come in on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we pretty much actually talked about all about metagaming and role playing, really. I mean, I, I think you're probably right. I don't think we can expound upon it much more. Um, yeah, like other than that, is like to just delve into like other theories and shit about role playing and 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 metagame and game design. So yeah. I think we can probably call it there. All right, cool. All right, awesome. I'll mark it off the list. All righty then. So yeah, um, I hope you guys, um, yeah, just <laughs> exactly, George. It's it's so weird how to like how does someone even have the capability to actually write legibly while being eaten alive? Exactly. But you know what? I want to know what's going through his mind in the like the last moments before he dies. And apparently, writing it's the only way to do it. I agree. <laughs> Except audio recording. Right. There yeah. are incredibly spooky hollow discs in Fallout 4. Where where like the end comes and it's like just a sound like just gurgling and screaming and like crunching noises. And sometimes it's just, oh hey, something's at the door and they turn off the audio disc, or sometimes they leave it on and you actually hear the get the fuck out and like and like you hear like gunshots and stuff. Yeah. No, legit. <laughs> but first, let me take a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you take the selfie and it's absolutely like the thing behind them, like coming up to eat them. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, and yeah, you gotta do the duck face when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Cthulhu problems. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh fuck! It's too it's too good. It's too good. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. Um, I'm gonna write down hashtag Cthulhu problems as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I suppose that might end up being like things that are both problems with Cthulhu, but also things that people have like problems with Cthulhu for. <laughs> Hashtag eaten alive. You got it, cabbage. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh man. Um. Also, that that's that's one that we're planning on getting to eventually. Leo Fire. Eventually, we're going to talk about like um, about like science as it relates to gaming and stuff. Yep. Because our backgrounds are sort of in that, so we can get into it. Oh man, dude. As soon as you as soon as you give me the go ahead to just like talk about like the way people like think and learn and shit like that, like in video games, I'm going to have a heyday. <laughs> oh, shit. You guys think I talk a lot now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, um, we're going to switch over to, uh, to fault new Vegas. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed, um, you stick around or you have something to do afterwards. Um, well, I was going to go to rogue one, but that was going to be with, uh, that was going to be with Poison, and since she's all fluey, I don't think I can actually go do that now. Yeah. Sadly. Yeah. So I'll probably stick around. Yeah, all right, cool. Well, so I'll, uh, I'll probably join the uh, the ranks of chat. All right, awesome. So yeah, um, hope all of you other guys enjoyed. Thanks for, uh, for being here. I'm going to switch over to New Vegas. Um... I forgot how I did this last week, but I guess I'll just go ahead and do it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, say goodbye to Saber in, in the window over there. Bye, Saber. See hey, you guys. And, yeah. There we go. Ba-doop. No, shut up, George. All right. So, uh, I'll just, uh, I need to switch some titles and stuff like that. And then I'll be back. Uh, <clears throat> I'll be back uh, in just a second. So, um, I'll put in the uh, title screen and then get everything set up.